Dear Prime Minister, Governor of the National Bank, Governor of the Lithuanian National Bank, esteemed colleagues from the international financial institutions, diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the challenge of speaking after so many distinguished speakers is to find something useful to say. Um, to begin with, you might be thinking, whereas everybody else that has spoken has an obvious role in such an event, uh, you might be asking yourself, why is the British ambassador standing in front of you? Um, I'll attempt to um, explain that, and I'll try to be brief. Um, the UK Embassy, as was said in the, my very um, uh, warm introduction, thank you very much, uh, through our Good Governance Fund, have been providing technical assistance to uh, the National Bank of Moldova for several years, since 2016. The overall budget of projects um, which we've delivered with the National Bank is, is over a million pounds. Um, the assistance we've provided uh, to the national banks covered various uh, important areas, such as strengthening the capacity of the um, national bank's unit for monitoring shareholder transparency, enhancing the overall financial resilience of the national bank, strengthening the capacity of the national bank to combat financial crime. And obviously these projects came in the aftermath of the infamous um, bank fraud. But moreover, the British Embassy, in partnership with the National Bank, funded a dedicated project on improving financial literacy in Moldova in 2019-2020. Um, why, um, why do we consider financial education important? And a lot of this has been, has been said, but let me reiterate from a UK perspective. Because I do think that no one country has all the answers to this, and we can all learn from each other. Um, we all witness around us how current global realities change our way of life. Um, and I mean, first, um, an accelerated transition away from cash and towards digital payments. Uh, that's a challenge for all of us. Uh, how can people, and particularly young people, uh, prepare themselves for a financial and economic world that is changing so rapidly and is so different to even that experienced by their parents. So even with, when within the family there is the will to educate children um, and young people, often the parents are not themselves well equipped to do so. How can we rise to that challenge? Some, some facts from the UK experience uh, which may be of interest to this forum. Uh, the London Institute of Banking and Finance surv surveyed more than 2015 to 18 year olds across the UK um, for a recent um, uh, survey on young persons' attitude to money. The survey found that 81% said they worry about money. Of those surveyed, 72% said they wanted to learn more about money and finance in school. Instead, many of these young people uh, were learning about money only at home. 56% said their parents were the main source of financial knowledge and understanding. And that number rises to 81% when those uh, who say they are self-taught is included. This survey was conducted in 2021-22. Similarly, according to a poll of 4,000 British adults carried out by the Centre for Social Justice, um, a think tank in the UK uh, in 2022, 44% of adults said they would be in much better shape financially if they had been taught basic money management skills such as budgeting. In England, financial education made its first appearance uh, in the national curriculum back in 2014. Um, today, it is often taught in secondary schools as part of uh, a chapter of the national curriculum called Personal Social Health and Economic Education, PSHE. It represents one of many important topics delivered through that curriculum subject, but it is non-statutory, so not every child um, automatically receives that training. In 2021, the importance of financial education was highlighted in the new UK Strategy for Financial Wellbeing, developed by the Money and Pensions Service, uh, which is an arm's length government body, not actually part of government, but related to. Its goal is to see an additional two million children and young people get a meaningful financial education by 2030, up from 4.8 million to 6.8 million, which is a, a significant increase. So we're taking this seriously, as indeed are the Moldovan authorities. Overall, in the UK, there's no shortage of online resources on financial education available to support people directly. Many private sector organizations, including banks and building societies, 
have developed their own offerings with well-known examples including Barclays Life Skills and NatWest Money Sense. So these is, this is the uh, private sector banking institutions taking responsibility as well. The Bank of England uh, developed two sets of resources covering both financial literacy and introducing pupils to economic concepts and how they can help young people to make better informed financial decisions. I think we'd all agree there's, there's no doubt that financial capability can be and should be a highly effective tool in helping people to navigate key life transitions and support good decision making as we go through our lives. Um, specifically, and I'll conclude with some of the key reasons why I think uh, financial literacy is so important. It can, financial literacy can prevent us from making devastating mistakes. Um, uh, Rogers talked about the, the prospect of a uh, collective ignorance leading to a financial uh, crisis, um, individual crises can happen from individual mistakes. Um, for example, floating rate loans may have different interest rates each month, innocent financial decisions which seem innocent may have long-term implications that cost individuals money or impact life plans. I saw myself uh, when I worked in Hungary that many people had taken out mortgages um, denominated in Swiss francs, not realizing or expecting that the exchange rates would move against them, and it lost a lot of people their homes. Um, secondly, financial literacy prepares people for emergencies. Through uh, though losing a job or having a major unexpected expense are always financially impactful. Uh, an individual with good financial literacy who has made good decisions can cushion the blow by preparing for such eventualities. Thirdly, financial literacy can help us as individuals achieve our goals. By better understanding how to budget and plan and save, individuals can create their own life plan that set expectations and that um, buffer them against potential um, headwinds uh, further down the line. Fourthly, financial literacy invokes confidence by being armed with the appropriate knowledge about finances uh, individuals can approach major life choices with greater confidence, uh, realizing that they are less likely to, to be surprised or neg negatively impacted by unforeseen outcomes. And I would add a fifth um, element, which is to do with national economic growth. I think if we are, are as individuals taking informed decisions about finances, that will contribute to stronger microeconomic uh, situations around us. And if we're all um, uh, making good informed decisions and our microeconomy is in good shape, then the macroeconomy will follow. Um, and again, back to Roger's point about uh, a collective loss of, uh, a, co a collective sort of move into the wrong area can actually have national level consequences. So finally, I'd like to encourage everybody um, attending today's forum to continue promoting financial literacy uh, in your various institutions and in your various, uh, to, uh, according to the capacities that you all have and the roles you will play, um, and to contribute to this emerging uh, evidence base around the topic. Um, it, it's a hugely important subject. We all need to understand the financial world we live in better, and I think today's forum helps enormously in that direction. Thank you very much.